What is up guys? We're back with another video and today I want to tell you about this keyboard right here. This is Corsair's K65 Plus Wireless Gaming Keyboard. So let's go ahead and take a look. When it comes to Corsair keyboards, they do offer 60 and 65% keyboards, and then they offer TKL in full size, but they've never actually offered a 75% keyboard. So this keyboard is gonna slot in really nicely between their TKL and 60 and 65% keyboards. As we take a first look at the keyboard here, we have a black frame with most of the keycaps being a sort of dark gray color. And then some of the outer keycaps being a different shade of black. Overall, I think the keyboard looks quite nice. And it's nice to see Corsair go with sort of a colorway as opposed to just an all black keyboard with all black keycaps. The chassis of the keyboard is mostly made of all plastic, but I do feel it, like when you pick it up, it's quite heavy and it has some nice heft to it. And the keyboard just feels solid overall. As I mentioned, this keyboard does have a 75% layout. If you aren't familiar with the 75% layout, it's basically a 65% layout, but you do get the added function row at the top. 75% has been extremely popular over the past couple of years as it's basically a smaller version of a TKL where you really don't lose all that much of buttons and functionality here, but it's around the same form factor as 65%, which is really great. In the top right corner of the keyboard, you'll find a silver rotary dial. By default, this can be used for volume control and you can press it in to mute as well. You will be able to set the dial to do different things within Corsair's IQ software, which I will show you. Now compared to most 75% keyboards with a volume knob, they have put the delete key right next to the volume knob and then the home page up and page down keys are below it. One of the main reasons they made this design change is because they put the three indication LEDs right here. So as you can see, very easy to see these. And of course we have our arrow keys towards the bottom of the keyboard. When it comes to the keycaps on this keyboard, Corsair is using PBT die sub laminated keycaps, which are single shot. If you aren't familiar with PBT keycaps, they're much more sturdier than your typical ABS keycaps that you find on a lot of mainstream gaming keyboards. They also don't show shine or wear, so your keyboard is always gonna look like you just got it. Another thing that's a bit different with this keyboard is that the actual legends on the keycaps are not see-through. In the top left corner of the keyboard, you'll find a pretty sleek silver keycap with the Corsair logo on it. Under these keycaps, you'll find Corsair's own MLX red linear switches. These switches do come pre looped from the factory and have an actuation force of 45G, pre-travel of 1.9 millimeters, total travel of four millimeters, and they do have a lifespan of 70 million keystrokes. The keyboard does feature a hot swappable design, so you can easily swap out the switches down the line if you wanted to. It's also worth noting that the keyboard does have a steel top plate and two layers of sound dampening, which include high density foam in a silicone pad. On the top edge of the keyboard, you'll find some connections and controls. On one side is your USB-C connection and a mode switch. You can switch between 2.4 gigahertz wireless, off and Bluetooth. When in off mode, you can still use the keyboard wired, of course. On the opposite side is a switch to toggle between Windows and Mac mode, and you'll find your 2.4 gigahertz dongle. I like that there's a place on this keyboard to actually put the dongle so you'll never forget it. The dongle is your standard USB-A dongle. As we look at the keyboard from the side, we can see that it does sit at a slight angle. There are two more layers of adjustment thanks to the pop-out feet on the bottom of the keyboard. I personally have the keyboard at its highest setting for me. That's the best for typing as well as gaming. There's also a circular switch on the side of the keyboard that allows you to easily just toggle the lighting on and off. So if I press it, the lighting goes off, press it again, the lighting comes right back on. The bottom of the keyboard has a really nice glossy finish on it with a really cool design. There's also four large rubber feet. You will notice that there is a little green LED that's flashing right here. That lets you know that this is charging because of course this is a wireless keyboard. 
I do have the keyboard here in wired mode. As you can see, I'm using the included USB cable. It is a pretty nice braided cable. Say you wanna go into wireless mode. I already have the dongle installed on my PC. So all I have to do is unplug this, hit the uh, button over here to go into wireless mode. And now I'm in wireless mode and the keyboard is ready to go. Automatically pairs, you don't really have to do much, which is really, really nice. So we'll go over to Bluetooth and Bluetooth is very much the same. All your Bluetooth buttons are over here. You can see that this uh, Bluetooth one is blinking. That means that it is ready to pair. You can pair up to three devices, extremely easy to go ahead and do that. You will notice that there's a bunch of alternate functions on the keyboard as indicated by the legends on the actual keycaps. One thing I really like about this keyboard is that when you do hit the function key, it highlights your alternate functions, which is really great because sometimes you're just not sure what button to press. You press that, you can see it highlights all of our alternate functions. When it comes to the rotary dial, there are built-in functions within IQ, which again, I will show you, but you can toggle between those very easily using the keyboard itself. All you have to do is hit function and then one of these arrow keys. So by default, this is set for volume control, but I can easily change that to say brightness on the lighting on the keyboard. So I hit function, arrow over, and now I can turn the lighting on the keyboard up and down quite easily. Of course, a keyboard review wouldn't be complete without a typing test. So here's what it sounds like to type on the keyboard. When it comes to the backlighting on the keyboard, of course you have per key RGB backlighting. And as you can see, I mean, it looks quite good. Even though we don't have the see-through legends, I think the backlighting looks great. And of course you can customize the backlighting within Corsair's IQ software. One of the things that I was disappointed about when it comes to the RGB lighting is that while you're in wireless mode, you only have a set number of effects and you can't customize those effects like you can when you're in wired mode. You also can't save your RGB lighting in wired mode and have it work in wireless mode. I'm not sure why, but it is a bit disappointing, but I am gonna go over the lighting effects that you do get in wireless mode. So this first one here is called watercolor, and then we have color pulse, and basically that's sort of like, it's gonna pulse in between different colors, as you can see, next color. The next one is color shift, which again is very similar um, but it's more of a shifting into the next color, as you can see. There's color wave, which is the typical wave, but it's just one color, and then the next color. Then we have rain. Then we have rainbow wave. Then we have spiral rainbow. And then we have type lighting which again is, you know, type lighting. And then we have a static color. So you can set this, you know, it's white here. Let's set it to red. And that's like a pink color. Let's set it to something a little bit darker, green, and we'll make it really green. So as you can see, you can change the colors um, but those are all the lighting effects that you get. And it's just a little bit disappointing because again, you're in wired mode, you set your favorite color, you fully customize like different lighting layers, and then you go into wireless mode and they're gone. When it comes to the software, we will be using Corsair's IQ software to do all of your customization. So the software should look like this when you go ahead and open it up and you will see your K65 plus wireless listed under, you know, your Corsair devices. If you have more Corsair devices, of course, you'll see more here. We can see that it is charging because we are plugged in via USB mode and this little icon lets us know that we are indeed in USB mode. Now, if we click in to key assignments, key assignments are like fully remapping or reprogramming the keyboard. Very easy to go ahead and do that. So you can see we have a picture of the keyboard here. Now, what you can do is you can actually create your own assignments. So you can create a remap, you can create a mouse button, a keystroke, media keys, you can disable it, you can profile switch, you can of course create a macro, 
you can open applications, you can do a bunch of different things, and then you can actually save that assignment within the software. So then when, you know, that new assignment that I made, I can just drag and drop it over onto the key uh, that I wanna use, which is really nice. Now, if you also, you can just right click and then remap, and you have a bunch of different ways to remap and do other assignments and things like that. But a lot of flexibility, there's a full built-in macro editor as well. Next thing is lighting effects. So here we can see again, the lighting effect live on the keyboard. Now, same thing with like the key assignments, but you can select different lighting layers and you can create different lighting layers as well. So you can create a different lighting layer. You can select from presets. So there's a bunch of different presets. You can do custom lighting as well. And you can, you know, uh, do lighting link colors, which will link with all of your other Corsair products. Now, if we do select something, we can go in and select a quick lighting zone. So I have all selected, but maybe I just want it on my WASD keys. We can set it on those or like, you know, different keys that you may want. Um, or you can just do it per key. So you can select a single key and then do it that way as well. So it's very easy to do. Of course, within each one of these presets, you can change the color, you can change the speed, you can kind of do whatever you may like. It's very easy to go ahead and do that, which I definitely like. Now under performance, you can change what is disabled when you turn on the Windows lock key. So when you turn Windows lock on, by default, I just have it disabling the window key, but you can also disable Alt Tab, Alt F4, and Shift plus Tab. These are great for gaming, so you don't want to tab out of your game. Under indication colors, these are the colors that will show up on your keyboard that I did show you. So, you know, if you do hit that function key, your function shortcuts will show up in white. Um, and then your profile, you know, will show up to whatever, you know, you want to set it as well. And you can set these, which is really nice. Um, you know, so you can, if you hit the function key, you don't want it to be white, you want it to be something else, you can go ahead and change that. Under control dial, now I initially thought the control dial on this keyboard was going to be fully, you know, reprogrammable, but it's actually not. So we have a set number of things we can do. So by default, it's volume control. So, you know, you rotate the dial left for volume down, rotate the dial right for volume up, and then you mute and unmute by pressing the dial in. Then you have brightness control, vertical scrolling, horizontal scrolling, and then zoom. And then you can um, toggle these on and off if you don't want them enabled or anything like that. And then finally, under device control, you can check for updates for the firmware. You can see your pooling rate here. You can see how much battery or if it is charging. You can change your brightness. You can change your layout. You can enable a sleep mode, especially if you're using this wirelessly, it'd be a good thing to do. So we'll put the keyboard to sleep after a certain amount of time. You can show the battery gauge in your notification area within Windows, put tooltips on, and then enable PlayStation mode. So that is the software, very easy to do, lots of customization that you can do within the software. As we come to the end here, I have to say that I really do like this keyboard. One, you know, 75% has become extremely popular over the past couple of years, and Corsair only had a 60 and 65% keyboard, and then TKL in full size, so they never had a 75% keyboard. So it's nice to see a 75% keyboard from Corsair again, especially because of the popularity of the actual form factor. For me, I don't feel like I'm losing anything with a 75% keyboard. I'm not somebody who uses a number pad or anything like that. You still get your arrow keys, and of course, you get the nice little volume knob up here as well, which again, you can customize with their software. The overall look of the keyboard is great too, and I, I really like how Corsair is kind of slightly stepping out of the box a little bit. You know, we have great keycaps that don't have see-through legends. We don't have like the typical gamer keyboard look. That's just all black. We have a little bit of contrast, which I like. I really do like the switches here. They feel really good. They sound really good. Talking about sound, you know, they did add sound dampening layers to this. That's something that we have seen sort of gaming companies sort of catch up to the custom keyboards. And it's really nice that we do have sound dampening material. So this keyboard sounds great. The PBT keycaps sound really awesome and feel good too. One thing I really like about PBT is that it doesn't show shine or wear. So, you know, 
you have this keyboard a month later, it's gonna look like it's brand new because you don't have all that shine that you typically get with the ABS keycaps, which is great. Now these are single shot ABS key or single shot PBT keycaps. So they don't, you know, they're not as heavy as a double shot. And I actually kind of like that. It makes this keyboard sort of feel a little bit more agile. You know, when I'm gaming, it just feels I don't know, this keyboard feels really, really good when it comes to gaming. Um, and that's what I really like about it. And I think it has a lot to do with them using a single shot PBT over a double shot PBT. Of course, you have multi-connectivity as well. You can use this wired wireless with the included 2.4 gigahertz dongle, or you can use it in Bluetooth with up to three different connections. So, you know, you can use this at home, you can take it to work, you can do different things. And it's nice that up top here, we do have a place to hold the dongle so you're not losing it or anything like that. Overall, I think this keyboard is really great. And, you know, Corsair is gonna be offering this for $159.99, which I don't think is a horrible price considering all that you are getting with this keyboard. Now, if you have any questions about this keyboard, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up. We'll see you guys in the next video. You have to understand how things are up here.